All right, Bumble family, this is the RV tour we've been promising. We're here in sunny, beautiful Raleigh, North Carolina. We're beginning our trek south. We want to give everybody a quick tour of the RV. So here it is, you can see in the backdrop, the Winnebago Spirit, 26 foot long. You can see the bikes over here on the backside. We have a drop cord now, we're here at Jen's mom's. We've got a drop cord here running the fridge and a few other things out there. As we're getting ready to hit the road uh, first thing tomorrow morning. We'll give you a quick tour, so come on with me, Jen. Jen's behind the phone here, behind the camera. So on the back here are the bikes, and there's the ladder. The ladder gets you access to the maintenance of the AC, uh, solar panels, fans, things like that. And then down here along the side, we got a, we got a gas tank here. This is our hookup for our uh, black water flush after we drain it, and the drain for the black water tank and gray water tank are down here. Get coming around, this is for cable hookup at the campground, if you so choose water hookup at the campground if we so choose. Um, this is this is furnace um, as well as water heater I'm both over here and then down here is power hookups. This is where this drop cord is going into now and then here is propane and then here of course is the most important generator. Good size generator and the rest of it is just a Ford E450 chassis. So we'll come around Got, Jen's about to be excited. Jen's got a new bike. It's been years since she's been on a bike, so that was fun. That happened yesterday. That was a good laugh, but made it. she got through. No falls. Not yet. So that's the hers in the back there. An old beach cruiser. And then one of the things we loved about this particular unit, this floor plan, is that it raises the bed up. We'll show you that. But the bed's like up here on the side of the unit, which allows us to have plenty of space for storage down here, which is quite uh, uncommon for this size RV. It's very hard to find something like that. So I call this the garage because it has everything you would typically throw in a garage. Tools, bike storage, camping chairs, that kind of stuff. All fits in here. We have a folding table in there. We have a portable grill. Thanks to mom and dad for that. Um, and a bunch of other miscellaneous items. Right here at the front, you can see that's our, our stinky slinky. It's our hookup for the, for the black water tank. Not to, has not been used yet. So that'll be fun when that, get, that day comes. Uh, so that's that's the big area there. It's also accessible from the rear, which is nice, but right now it's blocked with the bike rack. And then if we keep coming around, this this is the uh, vent for the refrigerator. Uh, we'll go in in a second. And then we have one more other one other storage area down here. It's not very tall, but it's pretty long. It goes nearly halfway across the, the chassis. Uh, so we got more chairs in there. Um, what else we have in there? Oh, we got sodas and drinks, things like that down in there. A few other miscellaneous items. The uh, beach umbrellas in there. And then and again, the Ford chassis. Uh, this is the Godzilla Ford V8 engine, the biggest they make for the the, uh, the van chassis, which is the E450 chassis. And then, then we have the side cameras, which has been quite nice driving down the highway. Turn the turn signal on, I get to see the camera from the right side, and of course the left side as it goes camera uh, with turn signals. Likewise, on the rear, we have a rear backup camera, which is nice. And then this giant thing over the cab. Um, is, the, is the bunk area that we're using for other purposes, which we'll show you in a second. It's also quite con nice because it blocks the sign as I'm driving too. <laughs> a little bit of added advantage of that. But it's huge. And then the awning, which I gotta throw out the awning. The best part. Check it out. It's, it's coming. huge. Still coming, still coming. So that's the awning. But also, you can I can adjust this here so it tilts. So if it's just slightly raining outside, you want to allow it so it has slope and drain of the water. You can do so. It's quite nice. It's got some lights here, LED lights. This is the most exciting part of the of the RV. No need to set up a tent and everything else. Just throw out the awning, throw some chairs out here. Everything's quickly accessible, nice and convenient. We're super excited about all that. So we'll, with all that said, we'll come on in. I'll, uh, I'll bring that in as far as we're driving by. <laughs> Little bit of slow process, but Almost there. <laughs> Almost there. And that window there is uh, above our bed. Opens up for ventilation. Or an emergency. 
emergency exit. And also emergency exit, very important as well. Hopefully we'll never need that. All right, so now come on in. So, for, well, first thing you'll notice here is this is the charge controller for solar system. Shout out to Jeff for all his support and help with that installation. That was a very fun weekend, super cold. Uh, we got it all installed, it's all programmed, set up. Finally completed all that installation um, just, just yesterday, really, the final program and everything. So we got batteries down here. Um, we got solar panels on the roof, and then we have a charge controller here. And we also have a battery monitor. And we can run everything off the batteries except for the AC and the microwave. Everything else we can run uh, all day long as long as there's sunlight and then into the night with the charge that we'll get from the batteries. So it's really nice. We'll be able to run fans, have our lights, run TVs, all that stuff, computers, laptops, phones, etc. So we can be off the grid. All right, so you come on in. Magic, first thing you come in, another project that thanks to Jeff for all his support. Uh, we've installed this cutting table here, cutting board. There's limited counter space, so one thing we realized is that we're gonna need a little more space to just to set pots and pans, things like that. So we installed this little flip up cutting board here, um, slash countertop. That'll be super helpful. Uh, fire extinguishers there. I hope we don't have to ever use that, uh, but it's there if we need to. And then as you come on in, you're gonna see the, see the couch here. Counter kitchen is here with a stove, also a rare feature in these uh, this size RVs. Microwave's up here. Sink is over this way. Um, nice Corian countertops as well. And then we have a bunch of cupboard space, which is what we also really, really like about this particular Winnebago model. A lot of cupboard space, deep cupboards too. Um, so Jen's got all this outfitted. Jen did a great job with frying bins. And, but this is all basically all kitchen stuff up here. Uh, as well as some other miscellaneous dishes and things like that. But mostly just all kitchen stuff here. And on this side is like entertainment stuff. So we've got a DVD collection. Thanks to the Bumble family for everybody providing the DVD collection. So it starts here with what we call the library. Notice no books. We're, we're, we, we don't do books. <laughs> but, uh, we don't books. We don't books. Well, we got Tammy. Right. But well, we got DVDs up here. Um, then we have us for other entertainment speakers, things like that, portable speakers for when we need to set up shop. Um, and then cables, things like that. Another another bin over here full of, of wires, cables, batteries, et cetera, et cetera. And then another full bin of DVDs that were uh, all loaned to us for the, for the time being. And then, as you see, this giant curtain behind us. Well, let's reveal what's behind the, the curtain. <laughs> So if we pull this back, Jen and I have turned this into basically more storage. Um, so the TV's here, there's two TVs, this is one of two, the other one's over the bedroom, we'll show you in a second. But this swings out, tilts out, and you can access and see that from the couch here, or the dinette in this location. And then we just have totes up here, which is going to be, it's more clothes, towels, bath towels, linens, things like that, all, all up there, um, just so that we can go longer without having to do laundry. It's really what that comes down to. It gives it buys us several more weeks before we have to do laundry. Uh, and there's a step ladder because I'm too short to yeah, reach and anything in this. This. Is, this is a little short step ladder to allow Jen to access well just about everything in this RV. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, to the cupboards, to the bunk over here, uh, to anything in the back side of the, where, the, where the garage is, anything like that. She's got she's got her ladder in here as well. Um, and then this setup is for, for my office. It's, uh, this is just a computer monitor. Everybody thinks this is a TV. And that's just a computer monitor that I have set up for my office. And I'll plug in my laptop and have dual monitors. The, the spoils of life these days that you have to have. And, and then this, well, we don't hope to, we'll have to do so, but this collapses or folds down, the table drops down, and all this becomes one giant bed for short people. Mm -hmm. uh, even I would not fit comfortably there. Uh, this one, however, is comfortable, and I can sleep on this one if need be, um, or if we had guests and sleep here as well. But this jackknife's out, pulls out to about right here, and that all becomes super flat. Uh, well, we don't really plan to use that, but that, that option is there. Underneath here, though, is a lot of storage as well, which we have, again, just groceries, things like that, the non-perishable groceries, um, bags, and uh, other miscellaneous stuff. Likewise here, and under here is, again, more storage of what we have is, is groceries. So add extra clothes up that way in linens and then storage of groceries are down here. Very limited fridge space. Um, so sodas, drinks, coffee materials, coffee supplies, all that stuff's buried under these here, which are uh, relatively quick to, for access to get to. Let's see. And up there, of course, is just is standard Ford cab. Uh, we've got, we've got uh, touch screen 
on a Sony touchscreen with stereo system that's actually terrible. Um, so we may not even be using that. We may use our own little Bose system, portable system that we brought. We'll figure that out as we get going down the road. And and then we'll turn around here and we'll get to, so we'll do the fridge quickly. Uh, so again, relatively small fridge that's gonna take some adjustment for us. Uh, things like buying a giant Costco supply of ketchup will not need to be, will not be happening anymore. We need to go to small sizes. So we'll Jen and I have some adjustments to do on those things. But uh, it fills up pretty quick, obviously. And, um, and then that's the fridge, and then above it is the freezer. I have to often be very careful as I open it. We, we just drove down here, so things had been uh, jostling around. Uh, but we got limited stuff in the freezer right now. So it's actually a good size. We could get frozen dinners, things like that up there if we need to. And then, and then the bed, as I said earlier, the bed is up really high, um, which is fine for us. A lot of people would have trouble with that in terms of mobility, but, but for us it's great because that gives us that garage. So we really, we're really excited about this. And you'll notice that there's no slide outs or pop outs in this RV. We also, that was part of our specifications. We didn't want to slide out or pop out because of all the maintenance associated with it. Plus that we want the flexibility to just about park anywhere we want, any campground, any park, state park, national park, in, a, in an urban environment, wherever, and not have to rely on a slide out to create a, a bed. Um, and do that on a daily basis. So we decided that as we specification, we want to get everything we can inside of something that doesn't have any um, slide out. So our bed is sitting back here in the back of the RV elevated up. And then we have the bathrooms back here, which we'll get to in a second. And we have a wardrobe. Um, this was a hanging closet with a bar, a rod coming across up here and you would just hang long um, dresses and suits. Clearly Jen and I are not planning to wear dresses and suits on this adventure. So. We converted all that to, to a wardrobe as well as some extra pantry space. And again, thank you, Jeff, for your help and craftsmanship with that project. Uh, so I've got my clothes in here. And then, like I said, we got more pantry space down here for groceries. And then, and then down here um, is more additional pantry space full of, basically, we took everything out of our condo and just threw it in here. There's limited food left in the condo now, uh, which was quite surprising that we were able to get it on here. And then a little more clothing there. On, and under the sink is um, is our trash can, <laughs> our very small trash can. But our intentions are to uh, keep bags that are small enough that we can just throw away at gas stations and um, Walmarts and things like that. And then we've got other stuff that you keep under the sink there, detergent, things like that. And then utensils are here. Jen found a pretty cool um, uh, utensil organizer to keep everything from making a lot of noise clanking down the road. And then we're planning to do a lot of plastic wear. Uh, as well as you know, a lot of disposables in terms of plates and napkins and things like that so that we don't have to do dishes very often. Water, hot water especially, is a luxury in this RV. Now the, the water heater sits down, so is, is a uh, storage type, not a tankless, or tanks type, not a uh, tankless type, instantaneous. That's something we may convert down the road, but we'll see how much of a nuisance it becomes to Turn on the to turn the propane on, light it up, wait for hot water. We'll see how much a nuisance that is before we convert that. And then, of course, the microwave. So, and then all this is like this is our level controls for the gray water tank, fresh water tank, black water tank, battery storage as well. However, I've since converted all the batteries and have its own monitor for that over there. So, that at this point, this has been rendered useless for battery purposes. Then, we have our water heater. Uh, switch here, which like I said a second ago, we'll see how long it actually takes and how much inconvenience it is to hit that switch and then wait for hot water. Um, then we have the water pump for when we're off of our own water tank and not necessarily hooked up on the campground on, on city water and municipal supply. Uh, generator start and stop is here. Um, generator is quite noisy. Although it's powerful, it's quite noisy, so we're, we want that to be a last resort, which would really be the really hot days where we need the AC running for several hours to bring the temperature down here before we go to bed. Um, that would be probably the primary use for us with the generator or a large kitchen appliance such as a microwave or um, Jen's coffee maker or something like that. We may have to kick it on for that. The coffee maker, though, the battery storage and the solar panels can be handled by that. Um, that was part of the specifications when we engineered that system. And then, and then we have a furnace and AC control here. Uh, we've got, I've mounted a, an indoor thermostat as well to keep up with what's going on in temperature in here. Um, this, this switch up here is the holding tank heater, which we'll be using tonight as it drops down into the 20s for a fresh water supply to keep that from freezing. And then lastly is the inverter control up here, which when we're coming off the batteries and we want to run our 120 volt receptacles, which we do, such as the TVs and everything else, we come off the, we come off the inverter um, there. 
and then we've got receptacles back here, receptacles over the bed, receptacles over the dinette, receptacles over the couch, quite a few places to plug in, both DC and AC. There's a lot of USB ports as well, which is another feature we like a lot about this unit. Now for the shower, or bath, I should say. So, toilet, another common question. Did we get a porcelain or plastic? It's plastic. It's a plastic toilet. Not certain that's really going to bother us, but that was a, apparently a common concern of the RVers. Uh, come on, swing around this way. So it is tight in here. Um, but here's their our toiletries. And we've got these little tension rods to keep everything from falling, which seem to be doing a good job. Every now and then something has fallen that we got to pick up, but mostly they do a good job. And then we got we have sink here, shower behind me. Uh, this is what I call the Navy shower. So you get the hot water going, grab this, lather up, hit that button right there, rinse off, and uh, and then just keep hitting the button on and off as you need the water. It's a quick Navy shower that saves that saves the water supply. We'll see how much we enjoy that. And that's pretty much what else is going on in here. Down to business and then back out. Uh, and then of course here's the bed. This is Jen's closet slash wardrobe up here. This is really deep. She's she's done a great job packing. So those bins that you see, she actually has them too deep. And um, I brought all the clothes. Yeah. So <laughs> plus she's got, yeah, she's got more up above the, the bunk area too. Um, but you know, we got to pack for all seasons, all different weathers. Uh, and we're trying to make it as long as we can without doing laundry. So that's the plan. So we try to cram as much in here as we can. Up there's a shelf with a lip on it. So we will get eventually more stuff up there um, as time goes on. But it does have, again, USB charging back there. Uh, plus a 120 volt plug in so we'll be for, that's for phones and things and then around the corner here is a there's another tv that tv is connected to the dvd player as well as an hd antenna that's on the roof with a booster that we've installed uh so that all that so we can get as, as we sit here in raleigh north carolina we have like 60 channels that we're picking up right now um for free and then the like i said the dvd player plugs into both uh or connects brother to both tvs so we can either have both TVs on the same DVD or just have one TV on it, however we choose. It's a nice little feature. Right here is, is an actual coat closet that we kept as a coat closet. Uh, each Jen and I had about three or four coats from light to heavy that we brought, uh, which was tough decisions to which ones to bring for a year long, knowing we're gonna be all over the place from the mountains to the beaches to the, to the hot desert uh, with cool nights. So it was interesting, plus the rain, it's interesting to see what we need to bring there. And, uh, and, oh, and a couple other things, so in terms of ventilation, so what we plan to do for most days when we get down to the hot climates is just open up these windows. There's a fan, uh, or ventilation rather, here. There's a window back there as well, so we can open all those windows and just allow natural convection to, to, cool, cool, to cool the RV um, at night for the, for the bedroom. Uh, again, we can turn the AC on. We have ducted AC, so AC can, we can divert all the cold air to just the bed, um, whereas in, during the day, we can open up that bedroom window and there's a vent above the bed and again just allow get some air changes through the through the rv and keep it from getting too terribly hot in here and there's a fan also in the bathroom that we could run and, and have some forced convection from that standpoint so we'll see how all that goes as well um, we're right now we're hopeful that that will keep this from getting too terribly warm in here uh, i got down to the 20s last night and it stayed without running the heat in the rv it stayed at like 52 in here um, we didn't spend the night in here i just woke up this morning to come see what the temperature was in here and it was 52 so it's fairly well insulated I was impressed by that. We'll see what it does in the summer, though. Anything else, Jen? No, that's it. That's okay. home for a year. Uh, yeah, so sorry for the long video. We'll show more videos and, as we move forward and uh, into our journey. And we'll show you what all we're seeing, what, what we're doing, and give you some more updates into the life of living in this 100 square feet, <laughs> which is going to be a lot of fun. All right, Bumble family. Thanks. Take care.